um, responding to the claim that breed specific legislation regulating pit bulls is unnecessary. Um, I would like to respond by saying that breed specific legislation regulating pit bulls is actually unnecessary based on data given, especially because the White House did state that it was ineffective. Um, so because of that, because of the ineffective studies done, um, I would like to say that dog bite prevention, regulating pit bulls and other breeds is necessary. And I can tell you the difference between the two. Um, breed specific legislation is a practice of using laws to regulate and restrict dog owners based solely on the physical appearance of a dog. And the dog bite prevention's goal is to reduce the incidence of dog bites within communities and improve quality of life for their citizens. My advocates' um, secondary claims were spay and neuter programs already reduce the risk of a person being attached by any breed of dog. Second one, these breeds only become aggressive because of the training that they get and the way they are treated. Third, the way to reduce dog attacks is to effectively control people and our groups that are involved in dog fights and improper breeding rather than banning the dogs. And fourth, laws that have attempted to apply the breed-specific legislation have had no particular impact on the rate of pit bulls attacks. For the first, for the first secondary claim, the speaker states that spay and neuter programs reduce the risk of um, people getting attacked by any breed. Well, um, and she states that according to the ASPCA, castrating dogs will, in, will decrease aggression, roaming around neighborhoods becomes less territorial, and will have health benefits. Well, actually, according to the ASPCA, in my research, I was able to find that it says neutering is unlikely to change fearful aggression behavior towards people or other dogs. It will reduce testosterone, but it will not eliminate it. It is largely dependent on dogs' individual personality the physiology and history. Also, according to Benjamin Hart, professor at UC Davis School of Veterinary School, and it was also stated in the ASPCA, there's an increase of risk of medical problems later on in life if castrated. They have three or four times more likely to get cancer like lymphoma, osteosarcoma, hemangiosarcoma. They can also get hip dysplasia, their metabolism changes, which causes weight gain and a possibility of cranial cruciate ligament rupture. With her second claim, the speaker states that the pit bulls only become aggressive because of the training that they get and the way they treated and the way they were treated, which kind of undermines other dogs that are attacked without being trained to attack. Um, that goes back to um, how their, pers their individual personality and their physiology and history. Um, yes, they are docile and friendly, but pit bulls are a strong and devoted dog as well. It's not only because of the way they are trained, but because of the stereotype they are given by the media. Uh, according to Cohen and Richardson, author of Pit Bull Panic, in a database of news reports, 937 stories over a 10 year period containing the word name pit bull was used generically to refer to a belligerent individual. I can't honestly relate to this because I myself am a pit bull owner and every time I walk into a, a veterinarian office, even a veterinarian office or even with my own family, they automatically assume and give that, um, that stereotype that they're bad dogs, like why do you have them in your house and on and on about that. Okay, my response to her secondary claim, which she states that, um, that the way to reduce attacks is to effectively control people and our groups that are involved in dog fights and improper breeding rather than banning the dogs. Um, according to the ASPCA, to reduce the number of injuries for dog, from dog fights, adults and children should be educated about bite prevention and dog owners should practice responsible dog ownership. The American Veterinary Medical Association Task Force on Canine Aggression and Human Canine Interactions say there is a well-planned proactive community approach that can make a substantial impact. This leads to her fourth claim, which she states that um, laws that have attempted to apply the breed-specific legislation have had no particular impact on the rate of pit bull attacks, which is true, but does not refer to the community approach that is recommended by the White House themselves. Um, 
the, the community approach actively focuses on dog bite prevention. The state of Nevada actually used it and was able to reduce the incidence of bites by approximately 15%. In conclusion, neutering or spay does not decrease aggression and can cause lifetime health problems. Media influences aggression in dogs, not just, not just the training, and education about bite prevention in dog owners, practice responsible dog ownership is a more effective way to control and reduce attacks. All right, well, the, all the material before the preview uh, at, and after you identify the main proposition is a little bit uh, confusing because I'm not sure exactly what you're saying. It sounds to me like you're saying, well, the White House has given the answer that says this doesn't work, so that's the end of the discussion on this particular point. And I don't know why the White House has reached that particular conclusion. And if that is true, then your argument here ought to be that there's nothing in dispute. Everybody agrees with this, and so there's not really an argument about this. Or uh, that there is something else that could be done that the White House has neglected, and that's really what we ought to be talking about. There may be some other choice also, but I'm not sure what it is. Like I said, it just seems to me like it's a, a little uh, confusing. Then you do the preview of what the secondary claims were, and you start following that structure uh, to give your answers. And on the first point, I think the first half of your first point is pretty strong, where you say uh, there are ways that we can uh, reduce this, but we're not sure that it's going to change all dogs, particularly dogs that have uh, personality characteristics like a pit bull might have that uh, you know leads you know they're fearful or they have unique characteristics and as a result you can't really count on that. So I think that that argument applies. But the second argument that you give on this particular point, the research from uh, the doctors basically talks about all the bad things that happen from castration. So. Uh, this is an argument not against breed-specific legislation, but it's an argument against castrating dogs uh, because they're going to get all these medical issues as a consequence of doing that. And I think that that's not relevant to the point that you're talking about, and in fact it may be uh, counterintuitive to a lot of people. Not to say that some of these problems don't exist, uh, but if the alternative is that the animals do you know, roam less or do these other kinds of things, it might be worth the trade-off. I think your argument about the aggressiveness and it being more a personality thing, I think that's the way to go. And it does seem to me like this would also be an appropriate place to talk about that stereotype. There's a reason that there's a stereotype about particular kinds of dogs. Uh, and mention, you know, the study that you mentioned later on that has the number in it, I, I want to talk about that in just a second because that's a little bit uh, uh, deceiving. It's an interesting point. It's something that would fit in our, my field, not so much your field. All right, so let's go to that second point, which is about the training and the treatment of the dogs. Uh, once again, you kind of remind us of the personality issue, but then you get to this idea of the stereotyping. The, the study that you're referring to talks about how people are sometimes described as being pit bulls, not the number of pit bull attacks or how, many, how frequently pit bulls are referred to in the media as being part of a violent activity. So in other words, you know, it's like somebody saying, you know, the... Uh, Republicans are holding on like pit bulls resisting Obamacare, or uh, you know uh, the uh, detective like a pit bull is doggedly determining, you know, following the the clues that were left at the scene of the crime. So I don't think anybody doubts that there's a stereotype about the pit bulls. What you ought to be arguing is that there's a reason that this stereotype exists, and that might justify giving pit bulls a distinct way of looking at them. Instead, you kind of say. And even my vet is stupid enough to believe this kind of stuff, which, you know, it's based on your personal experience. And I'm going, okay, now wait a second. Your vet believes that the pit bulls are dangerous, but you don't. Now, which of those two people should I believe? The person who owns the pit bull or the person who treats the pit bull? 
you know, I think your credibility is not going to be as great as the other person in this situation. So why you aren't using that other person's opinion is to kind of support your position, say, you know, some of these animals do deserve special treatment. That doesn't necessarily mean that they need to be banned or killed or run out of town, but maybe there are other kinds of things that would work at uh, modifying this behavior. For example, you get to this whole thing at the end, you know, this community approach, and I want to know what the heck that community approach is. Are people who get these particular dogs, for instance, encouraged to take some kind of training? Uh, when, they, when the dogs get licensed, are there uh, inspectors or dog catchers or something that go around and do special follow-up on whether or not the dogs are be, being treated effectively or taken care of in the yard the right way? I don't know what this is. And that, to me, seems like it would be a good counterclaim to say, they do deserve breed-specific legislation, but the kind of legislation that would prevent these problems, not the stuff that the advocate is talking about, just banning the dogs, that's not going to work. We need to have something like this, and that this is, in fact, that kind of breed-specific legislation. Um, all right, moving on.